Hi, I'm Peter Troot, and with me on the couch is Dr. Malcolm Ryan from UNSW School of Computer Science and Engineering. Malcolm, you're a researcher in artificial intelligence and gaming. Can you tell me first about the work that you're doing in artificial intelligence and how it will apply to industry? So, yes, I'm doing um, writing AI algorithms to control large groups of robots, um, particularly so that they can move around uh, without, without running into each other. So the classic example is we're controlling um, large cargo handling robots at the ports and they have to move cargo from one location to another but um, we need to coordinate them so that they don't run into each other so that they, each one can go where it wants to go. So this is applying artificial intelligence on working ports, uh, perhaps on the ports of Sydney or Melbourne. What benefits can you deliver by applying artificial intelligence to large working cranes like these? So our hope is to make the, um, the work process more efficient so that we can uh, plan for larger groups of robots and, um, and have them complete their tasks more quickly, thus making the whole port run more efficiently. Okay. Now, I understand that the work that you're doing out there on a port also has uh, some very real applications to the work you're doing in computer gaming. Um, can you tell me how moving uh, massive cargo handling robots around on a port is going to be of use to somebody who wants to play um, a multiplayer video game? Well, so um, we have many of the exact same problems happen on the port that happen in a computer game. We have a large number of agents in the port. They're enormous multi-ton cargo robots. In a computer game, they might be orcs or, or tanks or whatever. But in each case, we have a large number of agents which need to move around um, a space without running into each other. Um, the more agents that we can control, the, uh, the more cargo we can move or the more people we can have in your game. OK, so at the moment, we have a fairly high level of uh, action and interactivity in uh, high-level computer games. By using this AI, how can you make computer games better? Well, one of the things you'll notice in computer games is that often the worlds are very empty. Um, there just aren't as many people there in moving around in the world as there would be in a real situation. Um, what we're doing is allows us to control more agents. The limiting factor is the AI. We just can't control that many at the same time. Hopefully, with the progress that I'm making, we'll be able to control a larger number of agents in the world and so have a world that feels like it's more inhabited and more like a real place. Now, computer gaming normally strikes me as a fairly technical, high-end sort of activity. Uh, I understand these um, hmm. rather untechnical devices actually uh, are quite useful in teaching gaming technology. Can you, can you tell me about those? Yes, we, um, in, the, in the first class that I run, I run a game, game design class. And the first class we run, I, um, I get the students to clear all the desks away and dump a bag full of these in the middle of the floor. And it's their job then to make up a game. And um, it's surprising, it takes them all by surprise. It's a lovely way to start the lecture because they're used to sitting there at, at desks and listening to someone talk. And here am I saying, take these, make a game. Now, what do they get out of that, apart from having a bit of fun rather than uh, sitting in a chair? So at the end of, uh, we, we then go on and play a, uh, an, another game. I give them some rules and we play another game. And after playing that game, we, uh, we then sit down and analyze it and ask, well, what was fun about that? Why did you enjoy that? Um, what if we changed the rules? Would it make the game more fun or less fun? And it's actually surprisingly, uh, surprisingly uh, subtle what makes a, distinguishes as a working game a good fun game from, a, from an unfun game. Okay, now a good game is uh, different things to different people. You're also doing some work uh, using the uh, Nintendo Wii and you're aiming that at uh, you're not your traditional gaming crowd. You're working no. with elderly people, people who are undergoing rehabilitation for injuries. Absolutely. What sort of work are you doing with the, with the Nintendo Wii on this? So um, we're interested in dealing with people, uh, elderly people who have, may have had a fall or a hip injury and who need to rehabilitate their balance. And they have to do exercises. And typically those exercises are very boring and repetitive. They have to do the same actions over and over again. So what we're interested in doing is incorporating those exercises into a computer game um, so that they don't think about them as exercises, they think about them as a fun activity, something that they enjoy doing with their friends, but they're actually getting exercise out of the process. Tell me a bit about the sort of games you're designing for this. So we're using the, uh, the Wii Fit balance board, which allows us to measure how they move from side to side and around. 
And we currently, our current prototype is a, um, a maze game in which they have to walk around a maze picking up treasures. And um, we have two players playing side by side and they have to cooperate to pick up as many things in a certain, certain time limit. And we've been playing it up at the, uh, a local nursing home and um, the, the old people love it. They really enjoy the game. And are you seeing a result in terms of uh, real rehabilitation results? So this is the important question and we haven't actually uh, done the clinical evaluation yet. So this is the next stage. We've got a game which we know that they enjoy playing and which we're hoping will, will produce real clinical results. But now we've got to trial it and find out. Um, there's a lot of work in, in this area. They call it exergaming, um, exercise gaming. And a lot of people think it'll be uh, really effective, but uh, the clinical trials haven't been done yet. So this is the next stage. Now, is there any truth in the rumour that one of the games that's proving popular is a gardening game? Uh, well, the gardening game is still still an idea we're working on. There were, we actually, uh, it was important to us that the games that we produced were actually fun to the, to the, to the elderly players. And so the first thing we did was actually went and asked them what they thought was fun. And so we come up with a lot of different ideas and uh, one of them was the maze game, another one was a gardening game, another one was a skydiving game. They uh, seem keen on the idea of, uh, of going skydiving. Um, the advantage is that if it's a computer game, it can be anything. Um, these might be activities that they could never do in real life, but in a computer, they can, we can make it whatever they want. Fantastic. Now, away from the keyboard, you're also a bit of a writer, I understand, and you, you, you do a bit of dabbling in creative writing. Um, I've seen you've done some poetry, some essays, but your interest in creative writing isn't solely the writing process. You're also looking at getting some AI into creative writing. Absolutely. Um, we're trying to understand what it is make, that makes an interesting story. Um, and this is something that narrative theorists have been working on for, for a long time. But what we're trying to do is take it a step forward and further and ask, um, knowing what what is suspense, what is drama, could we then make a computer which understands these terms and is able to use them to understand stories, maybe to tell stories, ultimately, hopefully, to be able to make more interesting interactive stories, that, um, like games that actually tell a story in the, as they go. It sounds like a grim future where we're going to have computers writing our stories for us. Oh, absolutely not. It's not, a, it's not having the computer replace the author at all. It's uh, giving tools to the author to make more interesting, interactive, creative works. Um, we have no desire, and I don't think we ever will have computers tell st stories completely from scratch. But um, what we do want is to be able to make richer games and richer interactive experiences. And to do that, we need some understanding of how the stories work. All right, well, that's really interesting and maybe just a little bit terrifying. <laughs> Thanks very much, Malcolm. You're welcome. I'm Peter Troot. We'll see you next time on the couch.